All right, so guys, um, it's a great segue there, Steve, because another guy that Ohio State, as you mentioned, they they, they sell phone. You know, there's been a lot of talk about the work that they were doing with Jaden Davis, right? A lot of a lot of talk, and it's not misplaced. They have really pushed for Jaden Davis really hard, all over him. And the objective of theirs had to be, we got to slow him down, right? Remember, he was trending towards deciding in December, right? Now, they got a little help from Michigan with the coaching questions, with Harbaugh, you know, looking at the pros, and then Matt Weiss getting fired, right? Then you got to hire another quarterback coach. Then he has to get to know that guy. In that window, Ohio State was doing some good work. I think Ohio State was one of the, it's my opinion, Ohio State is one of the causes of him kind of questioning, are they really going to put it up enough? Are they really going to move it down the field enough to make me be a Heisman contender in the first round pick? You know, he's the kind of guy that will, you know, talk to his resources. Like, he knows C.J. Stroud. Like, he can reach out to C.J. Stroud and talk to C.J. Stroud about what's going on at, at, at Ohio State. So the Buckeyes have been really working overtime to try to wedge into this recruitment. But this last visit for Jaden Davis, I think, was, was really significant. They came out of it raving about Kirk Campbell, just like we've seen. every All the reports about Kirk Campbell have been glowing. I mean, none more glowing than Bryce Underwood's dad, right? I mean, hell, I, I could. <laughs> it's like a love letter to, to Kirk Campbell and to Ben Herbert. Right. Um, very, very clear that they are approved of the change at the quarterback coach. Uh, so to convince Jaden, who was like the the one advocate for Matt Weiss, like you who who was really riding for Matt Weiss harder than anyone, it was Jaden Davis. If you win him over, you were really doing something. And I think he did. I think he did a great job. I think the the vibe with with the with the players, the recruits that you saw in that picture is real. I think that the other piece of it was that they really kind of showed them, you know, we're going to be more balanced. It's not going to be like it was at the beginning of last season where, uh, yeah, they threw the ball, but they didn't really throw it down the football field. It wasn't a whole lot of play action shots. We saw that later in the season, and I think they were kind of emphasizing while he was here, like this is what it's going to look like with, with Sharon. And I just wish Sharon but also with J.J. with some experience under his belt, right? J.J. being healthy now to shoulder, fully over his shoulder injury. There's going to be more balance. There's going to be, going to be more shots down the field. Oh, hey, look at this flea flicker in practice, right? Just to, just to make the point. And I think that Michigan knocked it out of the park to the point where I even upped my crystal ball. I, I think that Michigan is overwhelmingly the team to beat. And – if and when it happens that they get them, and I think they will, I think you chalk it up as another victory over Ohio State because that's how hard they're working, Steve. I mean, they are working hard on Jaden Davis and trying to, after the Rayola thing, they they, they need to do something, right? It's really, really, yeah, I was going to say, right I was going to say, I mean, they they lost out on Dylan Rayola. Uh, I think they they do have some irons in, in a few fires, but yeah, I mean, Jaden Davis is one that they tried to, yeah, they tried to capitalize on Maybe, you know, we did say, I think a few podcasts ago, we mentioned Michigan did leave the door cracked, right? Because of the off season, the shuffling and stuff. So, you know, I mean, if you're Ohio State, you're, you might as well check in, right? I mean, Davis is super talented. Ohio State's got a long list of success uh, at the college level at the quarterback position. And, uh, you know, so it makes sense. But yeah, test another testament again to uh, Kurt Campbell. And, and, and again, another one where we mentioned, you know, Michigan's ba best recruiter when they're doing it is Jim Harbaugh still. Yeah. No right. Way. And, and right. And so, you know, it, it all goes back to just Michigan basically be, having to just write the ship. Uh, and, and, you know, like I said, it was really about kind of answer, just answering the questions that the Davis camp had. And as long as Michigan gave the right answers and, and, and showed it uh, that things were going to be where we've said they've been for a while, if not stronger. So, yeah, no, I, I, it, it is. It's kind of funny. It's like now you can kind of chalk. You could chalk this one up as another win over Ohio State. You know, it's like uh, Michigan making up for lost time here. That's why I said. That's what I was thinking with Mike Hart and Jordan Marshall. I was like, Mike's making up for his playing days. You know, two and zero, 
Last two last two seasons, he beats him for Jordan Marshall. If there's anybody who's motivated to beat Ohio State as much as they possibly can going forward, I think Mike is always going to be at the top of that list. But but anyway, yeah, I mean, like I said, Michigan able to if they're able to hold off Ohio State, which you know there's no anticipation that they won't be able to hold them off. Uh, it is. It's another win for them, and then Ohio State's got to kind of keep fishing around for a quarterback. So 